Hello everyone, this is Chris Espanolo. Uh, this will be my first video uh, for a new series that I will call probably Pixel Help. Um, and it's going to be part of my new channel, uh, Pixel Mentor. Uh, the reason why I'm creating this new series is to, as the name says, help people in solving their problem. And I will try to find online or through your suggestion that are more than welcome, um, new example of short, uh, an easy example on how to solve problem that people everywhere find on a daily basis. So yeah, let's get started right away. This first video comes from uh, a post on a Facebook group, uh, 3D modeling and texturing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's from this gentleman, uh, Wakas Hayat. I hope I pronounce it in the proper way. So sorry, Wakas, if I pronounce it and mispronounce your name or surname in any way. Uh, basically, is asking for help on how to model these kind of, I would assume, perfume uh, bottle caps or something like that. Um, I, in the beginning, I answer him like with a simple message. Uh, he got in touch with me right away. Uh, we exchange a couple of messages. I say, you know what, I will do a video. And then I thought of an idea of like, why not to do a series about that? So. In this first video, I will try to uh, see how I can approach these two bottle caps. Uh, one simply modeling, the other I'm maybe with modeling and, and uh, substance painter with a bit of texturing. You could approach like as anything basically in uh, NCG, uh, you could approach these, let's say problem in hundreds of different ways. My suggestion, uh, it's go with the simplest, at least try something. Before posting, before asking for help, you should always try to do something on your own and see where you can go. And because many times already just trying by yourself, you will find your solution or you will try different things and you will learn new things by yourself. So don't always rely too much on the community. Community is important, but also your problem solving attitude is the most important thing. So always try to do your things in the proper way. Um, so again, my approach will be, I will, I will try right away, right now, and we'll see how we, where we go, honestly. I, I don't have like, I'm not planning ahead too much. So let's go back in Maya. I'm sorry, uh, I'm using Maya. I don't use Blender, so, but again, these procedures are always like same things over and over again. So you don't need to do like anything specific. I will go probably start with a very low res um, sphere because this is like very spherical kind of, geometry um, and I will try to do something very simple again I'm not gonna go like very crazy in details or anything like that uh, I will always start with eight or a multiple of four generally to try to preserve as much as possible the quad kind of idea behind it so again I will not explain every step that I do but mainly it's gonna be like try to uh, replicate as much as I can the shape that I can see underneath. Uh, probably I will use the cat tool and something like that. So let's see, one is here, one is here. And again, I will try to reproduce very simply the basic shapes that we can see here. So once I finish to model the base one, it should look pretty much like this. I mean, like I'm not trying to be like extremely precise, but I'm trying to do something that is similar to what I'm seeing here. So. After that, I've modeled all these little um, details like this, I don't know, uh, almond shape and these, this one seems like almond shapes actually, but instead it seems to be more like circles that are like overlapping one to each other. So uh, this is what I ended up doing. And the cool thing in, in the way I did it is like basically <clears throat> I created like one main curve um, or one main polygon, we'll say you can make by curves, by polygon, whatever you want. And then I projected that, that polygon on top of my underneath surface. So to lay down this surface one on top of another. And the way I did it is also instancing the object one uh, on another. So this is still live in the way I'm doing it. So if I modify something, I'm modifying everything else. And even if I'm using the symmetry, I can do everything in a symmetrical way. So if I need to adjust how close they are to each other, or if I need to adjust like any kind of shape or form, it, this is pretty cool. Also, it, as you can see, this seems to be slightly thicker than the one that I did. 
And again, since I did everything in, in, uh, in history, let's say like that, how it's called Maya in history, uh, in a sort of a procedural way, what I can do is that I can always go, let me put this one in, uh, in reference mode so I can select it. I can always go and select the shape, for instance, the inside one, let's say, and I can work with my tools. I can move around like the reference, I can keep it there. And I can use like the moving uh, transform in Maya and I can increase the thickness of my model as much as I want. Uh, the, yeah. like this, so I can increase the thickness. And let's say I also want to have like more curve so I can add um, an edge ring here. I can take it and in the same way I can do another move by normal and now I have it more thick, more round and I can do whatever I want. And the same thing I did like underneath, you know, um, this seems to be like uh, bigger, smaller, whatever you want. But if you want to change the main shape, um, you can always go and grab like the main one and in a symmetrical way or not symmetrical way, I really want to do it. You can take it, you can scale it, um, select all the vertices that you want to do, and you can create different kind of forms, you see? So in this case, I, I did it like something different. So <clears throat> this is like, a, this is this is the way I approach it. And to show you again how, how this technique works, I can, I can show you also the backup that I usually do in my, when I work, I usually create also backup of the stuff that I, I work with so for instance as you can see this is like my main uh, surface i i basically created like using a simple cylinder and then i i shape it a little bit like a normal shape and then what i did let me delete this one delete the history so what i did it's i create something like that obviously I was using the reference. So from the front, I, I shaped something that was similar to what I was seeing in the reference. And then I placed roughly uh, close to the object. So let's say if I do something like this, it's gonna be visible that I, that I projected properly, okay? So if I do something like this and I select my, my object that was reference was uh, uh, locked and I use a, in my school screen wrap, skin wrap basically uh, it wrap an object on top of another based on the normal, based on the surface, based on the details. And as you can see, as soon as I click it, it snap on top of the object. I have some um, option in it and I can be like towards center, blah, blah, blah. But the, clo the, the cool, the, the one that I found most useful, it's the, the closest to surface. The cool thing about this is that it's still an active projection, so I can continue to manipulate my object and I can continue to move it around uh, the surface. So it still like slides on top of my object without any problem. And it, it conform to the surface of the object. So this can give you the chance to adjust whatever you want to do it of your model. Again, I'm going to block this one. I'm going to unlock this one. And I can do all the changes that I want, but it still, it should still reproject things on top of another. And if it's not the case, you can always redo the projection. So again, uh, I'm pretty sure every software has it or something similar. So it's a projection, whatever you want to call it. But this is the way I did it. And it's it's very simple and fast to do it like that. So again, this for answer the question that was on the forum. Um, this is the way I would approach this one. Uh, regarding this other object, um, I would personally model the basic shape of this one and all these details i would did it i will do it like in a painting uh displacement maps height maps inside substance painter if i'm gonna have time i will do also this one another day uh but for now this was my, my main concern today to show you how to do this one and again this one it's fairly simple you do like a basic model you do the uvs do this basic shape and you can paint this one using the super cool um curve tool inside Substance Painter to do like repetitive pattern. And you can also do these shapes by projection. It's gonna be very, very easy to do it, this one also in painting. So we'll see. It's also low res, this, this image, so it's not easy to understand the details over there, but yeah, that's how I would do it. 
I hope you guys find this useful and please put in the comment below uh, what kind of object you would like me to model or what kind of things you would like me to approach, what kind of problem you're having. Doesn't need to be a model, doesn't need to be necessary. That can be something that you troubleshooting something and you're failing and you want an help on it. You can share your scene with me and I will try to help you my best. That's, that's, that's why I'm calling this serious pixel help because I'm trying to help as much as I can people out there. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.